Welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. Um, in this episode, I want to show you um, a simple setup, basically um, allowing you to kind of draw using the motions of Susan Head. So what you see here um, is a demonstration of how I'm using animation nodes uh, to kind of trace um, Susan Head in real time. Um, so yeah. So it's basically creating curve um, and the size of the curve uh, radius is controlled also uh, using Susan head. Um, originally, this is this is actually the setup that's, uh, that was uh, taught by Omar. So Omar Ahmad gave this uh, setup and it's actually for tracing particles. And this is uh, quite quite advanced in itself even though it's a it seems simple but uh, the idea is um, to kind of catch catch the position of the particles and then set it inside the uh, um, some kind of variable or attributes of animation nodes and then you, you store that and then you you use it to generate curve so it's, this 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 particular expression is very new for me. I don't use get adder or set, set adder a lot um, inside Blender, but this is probably the, the beginning because it's a, it seems really, really powerful. Um, so let's, let me go back to the older file. Maybe it's a bit clearer. Okay, we have Susan head and then we have a target curve. And when I start playing back and then moving Susan head, suddenly curve appears and I think with this setup I don't have um, the radius control using the, the head yet and this curve is actually being offset if I reset the position option G so now it's uh, totally on top of Susan head you might think like okay this is something that Blender can already do you simply um, motion track and you, you, you enable this button auto keying and simply keyframe the position position of Susan head yes that's actually possible as well um, let's say let me try doing that um, so Susan head I'm gonna save this session 6 um, keyframe the locations and then enable auto keying and now if I play back and then move Susan head and start moving. If I go back to the frame zero, playback, Susan has, I'm not doing anything. Susan head simply just start moving because if you, if you look at under um, graph editor, there is a keyframe animations. So that's a, that's really one way um, you can do this, but What's interesting is that if I don't go back to frame zero, it's not resetting itself. It just keep doing the same thing over and over again. So it's, there's some kind of, uh, it's not like, it's like a real time because it's a, uh, it's real time as well that you, you all, you already have the animations on the head. So it's, um, so it's two things. If you if you've been using grease pencil, it's this this is probably something that's more like um, grease pencil. Uh, if you ever draw and paint using grease pencil, and then kind of look at the radius and then you convert that into a curve and then animate it, um, the curve radius that came from grease pencil will be animated as well. So yeah, I think this is really quite interesting. Now see, I'm moving Susan head, and then it's now it's continue recording what I did earlier. So if I am like writing, writing something like blend, and it, that's recording that part, and now it's gonna keep going. It's not recording anything, and then I wait a little bit, and I I, I start recording again. This kind of setup is something that I like to experiment. Um, with my uh, real-time um, setup with OSC. So now you, you can see Susan head. Something is being recorded, which is the animation of Susan head. 
at the same uh, at the same time there is this uh, curve that's uh, that's been generated using animation nodes in real time this so this actually uh, can be useful for a lot of things for procedural thing for example now if I go into the animation nodes and then maybe play around with the with the radius something interesting will happen so I'm I can adjust the radius over here and changing the radius kind of like um, if you are using grease pencil is and it's changing the stroke so if I repeat the same thing again while changing the radius you're gonna get a different result every single time it's quite interesting uh, I found so if, if the radius is zero it's become like a curve that's really totally nothing increase the radius and you will have a proper curve that's that can be rendered if you make it zero again there's nothing it's almost like if you are lifting um, your brush okay so that's the that's the result and you stop um, so yeah this the whole setup itself if I try to explain it um, let's tr uh, try from the back the final the final thing that it does is to generate curve object of course and the curve objects is getting um, its data from this point so there is this, this node append points to spline that's keep looping while it's running but at the the beginning there is a time info and there's this fill list and this special expression the, the fill list will because we have time here and then it's plugged into the length so the fill list is like you start at nothing like an empty an empty list as the time goes by the list will get bigger and bigger um, here a little bit of expression at the beginning is uh, it's basically saying if the frame is um, equal one equal one just reset the spline so it's gonna reset the list on top of that the result will goes in here there's a spline list and there's a vector list the vector list is coming from Susan head Susan head uh, we grab the data using object transform input the locations goes inside create vector list and the vector is changing based on the Susan head right so it's keep changing and for every frame it's gonna goes inside this loop and somewhat it will store the value thanks to this uh, expression so um, I'm not 100% sure why this actually works maybe it's kind of like this single expression does the job I believe uh, if I if I unplug this we are not getting anything right but because we, we plug this into this guy um, suddenly it's storing storing the value over time so this probably store it um, kind of temporarily or it's actually keep adding it um, this is like a like a Python script um, yeah and at the very end there's a curve object so it's almost like this is like a single loop that's doing uh, this loop and keep adding keep adding appending points into the spline because I'm not seeing the the list kind of growing here but it's actually growing over here um, maybe we can take a look using viewer so there's a loop viewer let's plug in the this vector data create a text so really try to try to understand and dissect this thing okay this is the vector coming in um, the spline this is what's interesting the spline the Bezier spline objects getting new data so the spline list goes in here you can't really see what's inside the spline 
unless we are using like a spline list input or evaluate spline so this is spline list we can take a look at the location it should be should be growing over time um, so let's use a viewer so this is actually spline list or so I cannot plug that in but I can plug this in there uh, loop viewer location goes in there this goes in there yeah cannot actually see if things actually happening inside the loop but this expression does something so from what I understand it uh, from what I understand it goes into the animation nodes um, there's a class and it generates something inside this, this spline if I change this to monkey I wonder if this still works so yeah it doesn't work if I change that into monkey or let me try or oh, unless I change this into monkey then yeah, it still works so it is interesting so it creates an object it stored that inside a data called splines in real time so that's related it's very interesting uh, because normally I I don't know if you can create this uh, it could be like a custom properties but something's a little bit more advanced than just a property it's like a list that's being generated and the data is kept growing over time so simple setup but it's quite advanced and if you want to try this yourself read uh, the question okay the question was asked by demos how to store particle locations in a list it's kind of like how to cache the particles position and then turn it into a curve and then here's the answers and the long answer by Omar Ahmad and that's the result it's quite amazing um, there is no blend here so you feel free to read the articles and try rebuilding the node tree uh, yourself for particles of course you have multiple curves and multiple particles that need to be tracked um, sphere chalk can do this in a s simpler way but this method is also quite quite interesting in fact you will probably learn um, different things all right Hopefully you find this useful, let me know um, what you think and I'll see you next time. Maybe next time I will use my motion capture setup just to paint something like this. So instead of dragging Susan, uh, we're gonna use uh, motion capture data. You, you might see something interesting here. Susan head is being controlled using animation, uh, animation curve, but at the same time, whenever Susan is static, I can still move it around um, which means uh, motion capture in blender is almost like built in um, so you can move Suzanne maybe dynamically and then you, you animate it put it into animation curve the animation curve normally takes the the dominant uh, presence but on top of that whatever animations you create it you can uh, you can still um, do something in post so like this the radius right and there's the tilt so that's uh, really something that I like to explore and hopefully you also understand and maybe you interested to explore as well in your own time alright thanks again for tuning in I'll see you next time bye